ionization potential let us discuss about ionization potential in this class so ionization potential means it is the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a neutral isolated gaseous atom for example if this is m from this we are removing an electron it becomes m plus it is in the gaseous state and this is a uni positive ion here the energy required is called ionization potential this is endothermic change so the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a neutral isolated gaseous atom is called ionization potential so this is the simple expression for this ionization potential you see and if you want to remove another electron from this it becomes m plus 2 a di positive ion here delta h is going to be again positive so this is also endothermic change so this is again gas this is gas in this case this is called ionization potential 1 and this is ionization potential 2 so the minimum amount of energy required to remove the first electron or you say from a neutral isolated gaseous atom is called ionization potential 1 and if you are removing from a uni positive ion that is called ionization potential 2 so these two you can see now whenever we are saying ip2 is always greater than ip1 irrespective of any other factors it's a compulsory condition you can say for all the elements why so and what is the reason for this so when an electron is removed from this m becomes m plus and m plus becomes m plus 2 after the removal of the second electron and whenever an electron is removed the number of protons will be more that means the effective nuclear charge will be more and the when effective nuclear charge is more the energy required to remove the electrons will be more so when a uni positive ion is formed the amount of energy required is when you compare it with the second electron removal will be less so ionization potential is always increasing when you are moving from ip1 to ip2 ip2 to ip3 so ip2 greater than ip1 or you say ip3 greater than ip2 greater than ip1 then coming to the factors affecting ionization potential so the factors affecting ionization potential are the first one is atomic radius atomic radius is inversely proportional to ionization potential the meaning of this is when the size of the atom increases the nucleus power will be less on the outer motion when the nucleus power is less we can comfortably remove the electron that means by giving less amount of energy we can remove the electron when the energy required is less the ionization potential is less so as the atomic radius increases the ionization potential will be always decreasing so this is one very very important point and when you look at the nuclear charge this is the second point that you can say the factors affecting second factor affecting is directly proportional to ionization potential it again means whenever the nuclear charge is more that means if you want to remove the electron it is um, if the nuclear charge is more for example uh, you consider two atoms hydrogen and helium in case of helium there are two protons in case of hydrogen there is only one proton so from helium it is difficult to remove as two protons are there because more positive charge is there so more positive charge means that attracts electrons much closely so the removal will be very very difficult so nuclear charge is directly proportional to ionization potential then screening effect screening effect is inversely proportional to ionization potential this is very 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 important point what is the screening effect screening effect means when you are seeing the nucleus and the outermost shell the all inner shells are considered as screens are you say the inner shell electrons function like a screen between the nucleus and the outermost shell and when you see the first electron uh, which is present very close to the nucleus that is having complete nucleus power and it cannot be removed easily and when you see the last electron there are many electrons in between them so all these many electrons the nucleus power will be more and not on the last electron so last electron can be removed easily and in between this the various different orbitals will be available s orbital p orbital d orbital and f orbital when you see s p d f orbitals we know the shapes of the orbitals s orbital is spherical in nature p orbital is dumbbell d is double dumbbell and f is four fold dumbbell and we consider the nucleus is as a spherical in shape so the nucleus where it is spherical in shape comfortably the s orbital can completely cover the nucleus for example you can keep a 
small rubber ball in a big football comfortably and uh, a football can completely cover the ball but when you see it is difficult for a bat or for a pen to completely cover the ball because the pen shape and the ball shape is not same in the same way a p orbital or d orbital cannot completely screen the nucleus power whereas s orbital can completely screen so the screening effect if you see the much screening you can observe for s orbital than p than d than f this is one very 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 important point s orbital screening power is more than p orbital than d orbital and than f orbital it's very 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 important point so you can see one important point that means when s orbitals are going to screen that means when s orbitals are there between the nucleus and outermost shell you cannot remove electrons easily okay from the s orbital but uh, you can remove electrons outside the electron uh, you can remove the electrons from the outer orbitals easily when the screening is done by the s orbitals because s orbitals are close to the nucleus so you cannot remove the electrons from s orbital but uh, after the s orbital whatever the electrons are there you can easily remove that means when the screening power is more on the outermost shell the nucleus power is less so you can comfortably remove the electrons right so screening effect is inversely proportional to ionization potential here i would like to give you one more that is penetration power penetration power is directly proportional to ionization potential what is penetration power penetration power means coming close to the nucleus when you are again looking at the different orbitals s p d and f orbitals s orbital is spherical in nature as we discussed just now the nucleus is also spherical so a s orbital can completely come close to the nucleus so s orbital electrons will be much in attraction of the nucleus so you cannot remove electrons from the s orbital easily so the energy required to remove the electrons from the s orbital will be very 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 high so the ionization potential from the s orbitals will be more so this is called penetration penetration means coming close to the nucleus and that penetration is again s p d f so here i would like to give you one very very important clarification the energy required to remove the electrons from the s orbital is difficult that is the energy required to remove electrons from the s orbital is very high because the removal is very very difficult and uh, the energy required to remove the electrons after the s orbital is very easy because s orbital screening is very proper so the nucleus power is completely stopped at the s orbital after that there is no nucleus power so you can comfortably remove the electrons so from the s it is difficult so penetration is directly proportional to ionization potential and the screening effect inversely proportional to ionization potential means you cannot uh, remove electrons from s orbital easily but you can remove electrons after the s orbital is very 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 important part and one more is half filled and full filled electronic configurations half filled and full filled electronic configurations again directly proportional to ionization potentials here you can say very simple example of chromium copper nitrogen beryllium and all this whenever a full filled or half filled electronic configuration is there that is a stable electronic configuration and the atom won't want to lose electrons because by losing the electrons the stability will go right so this is one very very important point then the trends if you see the trends if you see down the group atomic radius will be increasing when atomic radius increases obviously the nucleus power will be decreasing when the nucleus power decreases the ionization potential value will be decreasing and in periods as we move from left to right the ionization potential will be increasing the reason for this is very simple as we are moving from left to right the ionization potential is increasing the reason is the atomic radius will be decreasing and atom to atom the effective nuclear charge will be more when effective nuclear charge increases the radius will be less when the radius increases the ionization potential will be uh, radius decreases means ionization potential will be increasing but uh, there are some exceptions for example lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine and neon in this case if you see beryllium and boron it should be like this but here it is beryllium is more in this case nitrogen is more and this exception is because of the full filled electronic configuration of beryllium and this exception is because of the half filled electronic configuration of the nitrogen so whenever full filled and half filled electronic configurations are there the stability will be more and this type of exceptions you can observe even 
uh, the next period also for example magnesium and aluminium magnesium will be more actu actually aluminium should be more but and phosphorus and sulfur phosphorus is more this is because of the half fill and this is because of the full fill so this is all about the trends and we will discuss more in next class